This is going to be a comparison video between the three major national scenic trails in America, the Appalachian Trail on the East Coast, the Continental Divide Trail on the Rockies, and the Pacific Crest Trail on the West Coast. Just to give you some background on me, my name is Dan. I did the southern half of the Appalachian Trail in 2009, went over to the Pacific Crest Trail in 2012, did it northbound, did the Continental Divide Trail northbound in 2015, and then directly after that, went over to the Appalachian Trail in 2015 and early 2016 and did its entirety southbound. We're going to make this really bare bones, just skimming the surface of everything in the interest of keeping this video short. Uh, I've got four categories, overall difficulty of completing the trail, physical difficulty of completing the trail, logistical difficulty of completing the trail, and mental difficulty of completing the trail. The Appalachian Trail is the most physically difficult trail for a few reasons. First and foremost is the routing of the trail. There is a lot of up and down, and a lot of that up and down is steep. Not a whole lot of switchbacks on this trail, especially in the northern section. The tread on the Appalachian Trail is also really rough. Lots of rocks, lots of roots all the way through. Sometimes it's extreme, like in New England and Pennsylvania. You'll just be walking on rock all day. The third reason I think the Appalachian Trail is the most physically difficult, assuming that you're going to do it during a normal hiking season, which is summer, is that it can get really, really humid on the East Coast and it can be really muggy and miserable all the way through. Continental Divide. The Continental Divide Trail is also steep, especially when you're doing cross-country sections. It will have some serious scrambling. The hardest parts of the CDT are harder than any parts of the AT, but on average the AT is harder than the CDT. The tread is usually pretty good. Um, it's a western trail, so there's not a whole lot of rocks and roots, not a whole lot of old growth forests. Having said that, you throw an elevation into the equation. So when you're hiking at 13,000 feet or 12,000 feet, you will be short of breath. It's just one of those things. You will slow down as a result of it. Thirdly, the trail conditions of the Continental Divide Trail can be really bad. You can run into a lot of snow. Snow will really slow you down. Snow coupled with elevation, coupled with rugged terrain and navigation. It can be uh, make for a pretty frustrating day. Pacific Crest Trail. Pacific Crest Trail is physically the easiest trail. The climbs are usually pretty relaxed. Uh, lots of switchbacks going up and down, so you are gaining and losing a lot of elevation, but it's nice and easy and gradual. There are five reasons the Continental Divide Trail is the most difficult trail logistically. First and foremost, Navigation. Navigation is rough. Signage is not great. It's not as bad as a lot of the guidebooks and old school guides would lead you to believe, but it's still not good. Thankfully, we got apps now like Guthook and some great maps from Jonathan Lay. I'll put a link up here in the description to a blog post I made about navigation on the CDT. It's worth a read if you're going to be going out there. Second reason is the resupply. Resupply is not great. It's few and far between. You will probably have to have a resupply strategy. The name of the game on the Continental Divide Trail is long carries. If you can carry 200 miles of food for a resupply, you're going to be a much more efficient hiker. Getting in and out of towns can be really tough. I had a hard time hitching in and out of towns on the uh, Continental Divide Trail. It took up a lot of my time. The third reason is obstacles. You're going to face trail obstacles a lot. Not good trail maintenance out there. The snow is bad. Like I mentioned before, you were going to hit snow in Colorado. It's just one of those things about the Continental Divide Trail. Everybody hits it every single year. You have to deal with it. It is what it is can be a lot of blowdowns on the trail, trail can be wiped out, fire, all sorts of things can go wrong. So trail conditions can be definitely extremely challenging. The fourth reason is weather. Weather is extremely fickle on the Continental Divide Trail. It's much colder than you think it will be. It can change in the blink of an eye, lots of cold rain, snow all the time, all through the summer. So if you're playing around with high elevation in the Rockies, it's to be expected, but definitely makes things a little bit dicier. The fifth reason the Continental Divide Trail is the most logistically difficult trail is because of water concerns. Water is very inconsistent on the Continental Divide Trail. You will be going through long dry sections with no water at all. You will be going through sections with really inconsistent sources that may or may not be dry depending on when you started or depending on what that year was like for snow or anything like that that will affect the water table. The Pacific Crest Trail is the second most logistically difficult trail for reasons similar to the Continental Divide Trail. They're both Western trails. They're both gonna face the same things. First is navigation. Navigation on the PCT was not too bad in 2012. I ran just off maps and was fine. Snowy sections can be difficult. I'm sure things have only gotten better. Resupply on the PCT was pretty good in 2012. I only had to send a few boxes to myself in Washington, Oregon. I'm sure it's only gotten better.
obstacles on the Pacific Crest Trail. There were a lot of blowdowns on the Pacific Crest Trail when I went through. Also, in recent years, there have been forest fires, and of course, every single year, typically you're going to run into snow in the Sierras or in Washington, Oregon, or both. Weather on the Pacific Crest Trail is typically pretty good. In 2012, it rained on me one day. Uh, I wouldn't go out there expecting to be not rained on at all, but ultimately, pretty good weather conditions. Water is a concern, but it's not as bad as the CDT. Appalachian Trail, navigation is pretty much non-existent. Follow the white stripes, you're going to be okay. Resupply, easy access to resupply. You can go through the Appalachian Trail and really not have much of a resupply strategy. If you want to do it quicker or more efficiently, obviously it's in your benefit to send yourself boxes. Obstacles, obstacles are usually pretty good. Sometimes you get blowdowns in the forest, but ultimately not bad at all. Uh, not a whole lot of snow. Weather, weather can be pretty bad, but it's warm. Uh, it rains a lot on the Appalachian Trail. Water's good on the Appalachian Trail. It rains a lot, water flows, you're going up and down the creeks a lot. It's pretty good. There are dry spots, but ultimately it's not something you're gonna have to worry about frequently. Mental difficulty. This is how hard it is to get up and walk every morning. The Appalachian Trail was the hardest trail for me mentally. It's hardest to stay motivated on both times I attempted to through hike it. First and foremost, there's not a whole lot of scenery on there. It's not a pretty trail, it's pretty grindy. It really is a you know, long green tunnel. It can be tough to wanna to wake up at five in the morning every day and put on your wet socks and hike through a bunch of fog and trees. It just can be tough. So definitely an aspect of the Appalachian Trail that shouldn't be overlooked. The lack of scenery can really get to you. Enjoy those moments when you get them. Second reason the Appalachian Trail is hard to stay motivated on is it's easy to get off. You go through a lot of towns a lot of town access, a lot of road access. It would be really easy for most people just to get off and catch a Greyhound home or an airplane home. The third reason the Appalachian Trail was mentally difficult was because of the physicality of the trail. It can start to wear you down. You really do have to work for miles every day and it can be tough to reconcile that, especially when some of the climbs don't really make sense to you as a hiker. The fourth reason the Appalachian Trail was mentally difficult for me to get through was because of something that doesn't get talked out about a lot. There's a lot of people on the Appalachian Trail and there's more and more negative attitudes out there. Who you hang out with definitely affects your state of mind. It doesn't control it, but it definitely affects it. So when you hang out with a bunch of people who focus on negativity, it can be easy for you to focus on negativity. I've seen large groups of hikers get affected by negative outlooks on trail conditions on every single major trail, but Definitely more so on the Appalachian Trail. Possibly because the Appalachian Trail usually gives you more to be negative about than the other trails, but also I think part of it has something to do with the culture around it. So if you're a new hiker and you feel yourself getting, you know, looking at the bad side of things all the time because of people you're hiking with, I suggest hiking alone for three or four days, maybe for longer, or finding new hiking partners. Just that easy. The CDT was the second most mentally difficult trail for me. Ultimately, really not that hard to get through. Not really a grindy trail. Had its moments. The logistical difficulty can be problematic. It's not a forgiving trail. So if you make technique mistakes, or you make techn technique mistakes frequently, like getting lost, not watching your resupply, not making your miles to get to your next resupply, all those little things start to add up and it can really feel like the trail's fighting you the entire time. But ultimately, all it is is it's just a challenging trail and if you don't have your stuff dialed in you're gonna have a bad time okay but seriously can be really difficult to get through um it's not a forgiving trail the second reason the continental divide trail is mentally difficult is because of the remoteness especially if you're hiking alone you can get old i went through days on the continental divide trail where i didn't see anybody especially through the snowy sections uh, i can get a little lonely out there the scenery on the CDT is spectacular. My favorite trail for scenery. Part of the reason why it's hard to get demotivated on the CDT. I had bad days on the PCT and CDT, but when you get to camp out on some gorgeous vista and watch the sunrise, it's, it's hard to stay in that on vacation, you know? It's, it's awesome. It's a beautiful trail, so hard to stay upset. The culture is also great on the Continental Divide Trail. I hiked with more hikers on the Continental Divide Trail than I did on any other trail mostly because we were all experienced and doing about the same mileage rate, but also because it was pretty cool getting to learn from all these hikers who had done three, four other trails or 
triple crown twice or whatever whatever they could do it was great trail to learn on you can learn a lot from other hikers that's one of the beautiful parts about hiking too is everybody has their own approach and a lot of times you can mix and match techniques and really see the effectiveness of one or the other depending on conditions trail year who you are how you're hiking all sorts of stuff but yeah Condo on the Vibe Trail has a great culture around it the third thing Condo on the Vibe Trail has got it going for it in terms of mental difficulty is remoteness now, I mentioned this before because you can get lonely, but on the plus side, it's hard to leave that trail. I mean, you might want to go one day, but you're in the middle of Wyoming. Like, where are you going to go? You know, like you're, you're not going anywhere. You have to get to town and even then it's going to be hard to get out. So you might as well just do the thing, right? Didn't think about quitting at all on the Continental Divide Trail personally. I enjoyed every minute of that trail, but I could see that your exit strategy would have to be pretty complicated. Pacific Crest Trail. It's hard to get demotivated on the Pacific Crest Trail. Everybody is really positive. All the trail towns know what you're doing for the most part. They're going to give you rides in. Great trail, super scenic, lots of great places to camp. It smells good. The tread's easy, easy to take big chunks of trail out. I mean, it's a hard trail to get upset about. I don't think I got frustrated but once or twice on the entire Pacific Crest Trail. Having said that, you know, you're going through from Mexico to Canada, you're going to run into stuff that's going to be tough, bugs, snow, some creek crossings, things like that, but ultimately, it's a good trail. Besides, you're in California, be positive. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.